okay so uh, what is the iteration first we'll try to understand what is the iteration the iteration is like uh, iterating through like uh, i can say i have a for loop okay what the for loop will do till the condition met it will start incrementing one by one or so based on their incremental condition again if you want incremental by one it will get increment if you want increment by two it will get increment it will till it it meets the condition it will keep going through to keep executing the set of lines of, of code it will which is there in the loop it will be keep executing till the condition satisfied till the condition fails right that is called iteration in the similar way there is something called recursion there is something called recursion so when you call when you say recursion the recursion is something uh, in it's, it's very quite common in the c c++ java and any other languages as well so when we call recursion when we call recursion the meaning the the, uh, the definition of the recursion is a function a function calling himself is called recursion a function or a method calling himself is called recursion let's look at that how 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 we'll write a recursion and how it will uh, do that recursion what is a recursion all right it's also quite it also looks similar to iteration but it is a little different than iteration so how it is different than iteration so the, it's a different than iteration with respect to the way it get call the way it allocates the memory right if i'm doing a iteration the iteration let's say i have a list of uh, let's assume that i have a list of values let's say i have a list of numbers okay i have one two three four five six if i say iteration the iteration will do it will start from here it will keep going on till the condition fails or till the the, the list or the the group of values are exhausted right in this list let's say this list let's say an example val nums equal to list of don't worry about the syntax at this point creating a list and all so we'll really discuss about that later okay anyway we have a dedicated class for that let's assume that this is my list or a group of values now i want to iterate through each and every value i want to iterate through each and every value and i want to do some operation i want to do some operation so there are two ways to do it right there are two ways to do it right what are they can anyone tell me there are two ways to do that iterating through each and every element and do some operation so there are two ways to do that can anyone tell me what is that way the way what we'll call what is that that what is that we'll call so there are two ways yeah the loops only but there are two ways so one is we will call we will call imperative style there are two ways to do it one is called imperative style what is imperative style imperative style is nothing but writing like a java program okay imperative style is like like a writing like a java program let's look at here i want to i want to find the total of all these numbers find the total of all these numbers look at guys here if i want to do total of all these numbers what i will i do in a in a imperative style i will take uh, one mutable argument saying that sum i will define some default value zero here then what i will do i will loop through i will loop through all these numbers all these numbers all these numbers and 
what I will do here? I want to do a sum. Sum equal to plus equal i. And the finally, I will return a sum. I really no need to write here. I just, I can say sum, just a sum. Or I can just print, print the sum, whatever you want. Either you can return it, or you want to print it, you just to print it. What is this style is called? Imperative style. This is called imperative style. The same function, the same one, where, where we can write in the, we can write the same thing in a, same thing in a, what is other style called? Declarative style. What is other style is called? Declarative style or functional style. Right? So what is the difference between imperative style and functional style? What is the difference between that? So if you see in the imperative style, let me write it here, imperative style. Where is the cursor guys? This is I'm writing imperative style. Here in imperative style, the problem is we need to tell to the compiler, we need to tell to the compiler each and every step of the way to execute or the, the each and every step of the way how it has to run. So in imperative style, we have to tell what to do and how to do both. What is the logic? and how it has to execute. Both are, we have to tell. Both we have to tell. And the other, other thing is, here we will be having mutable objects. Mutable objects. It's a var means it's a mutable, right? What I'm doing here, every time I'm reassigning the things. Every time I'm reassigning the things. So, the I cannot say it's a limitation. I can say, when I write imperative style, I have to tell, I have to tell each and every step of, each and every step, step of what to do and how to do. The very first one. How to do. Instead of concentrating on logic, I have to take a number, then I have to declare a variable, and I have to loop through each and every point, then I have to do I don't know, sum plus sum equal to each and everything. If you look at here, each and everything, I need to tell what to do and also how to do both. Right? And other thing is mutable objects. Mutable objects. Mutable objects will be there. What is the mutable objects? I'll be having a variable which will be keep changing. That's that's where the Scala clearly says that Scala is more 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 supports immutable objects. Scala and any functional programming language, uh, they are more into immutable objects. They really don't like to use the mutable objects, right? So, in a functional style, if I, if you ask me to write the same thing in a functional style. There is a cursor, guys. If you ask me to write the same thing in a functional style, look at, guys, I'm going to write in a functional style, in the Scala style, or you can say declarative style. In the functional style, you really no need to concentrate on what to do. I mean, you no need to really concentrate on how to do. You just need to concentrate on what to do and what to get the uh, result. You really no need to say how to do. How to do will be taken care by your Scala compiler. Okay, let's see that what is that? What is I'm talking about? So same thing, same thing, what I can do, I can write anyway, I have declared the list. I have a list of variables. Directly, I'll say number dot. I just want what I need to do. I need to sum off each and every element, right? Fold left. We'll talk about this, these functions, guys. These are all higher order functions. Fold left, fold left, which will take an initial value. 
fold left which will take an initial value and and an anonymous function here an anonymous function here x comma y x plus y look at here the single line what i need to do finally i need to do this i need it i need to do this i really don't need to do all these things i know uh, i don't i really no need to say i want uh, uh, here every time i'm not creating a mutable object i'm creating a multiple immutable objects i'm creating so many immutable objects you may say that sir here i have used only one object which is called sum but you are using here every time every time one object will be your you are making use of the one object every time you are making use of an object so you are creating so many we have in uh, since we know that scala runs on top of jvm our good friend who cleans the memory who work on the memory who who uh, deallocations the memory who is that guy garbage collector garbage collector improve a lot in these days right we really no need to worry about the cleaning of the memory and all he will take care of all those things right so in the functional style or declarative style we are simply we are simply we are eliminating what to do and mutability and we will eliminate mutability so uh, are you guys able to follow what is my context what i am trying to explain here is everyone able to follow what i am trying to explain here the if you see the code difference between the first pro, first example which is the imperative style and second example which is the functional style you'll understand so in the normal java code and all we used to write like that right we have to specify we have to look through we have to, each and everything each and every step what to do we need to tell but then it comes to the functional style we just need to tell you just need to concentrate on what need to get the result is that clear guys everyone look at guys here the same thing look at guys here same thing look at guys here same thing i have declared the list of numbers i have declared the list of numbers and what i am doing here there is something called fold left there is some method called fold left this is the initial value so uh, i i will be explain you in a single minute now i'll explain you in a minute so saying that how it will work so I, i'll just say fold ref i have say i have taken uh, uh, x comma y and i just uh, doing that x plus y and i'm getting the result i'm getting the result so based on the my initial value the or uh, the result will change okay so let me tell you how it will work okay let me tell you how it will work sir how it is difference with uh, how it is related to recursion right so i'll i'll tell you that okay what is my cursor if you look at here i have a list 1 2 and so on right the initial value is 0 the 0 here the 1 and 2 will be there the initial value will be 0 okay what will happen initial value become 0 okay and the other value will become 1 okay now x plus y right this is all result here 0 plus 1 1 and the 1 will become x 1 will become x the next element is 2 3 now x become 3 the next element is 4 oh, sorry uh, 3 it becomes 1 2 3 right next element is 3 6 now x becomes 6 the next element become 4 6 plus 4 10 now x become 10 plus 5 15 now x becomes 15 plus 6 you see the here guys you see here this is a sequence 1 2 3 4 5 Six, fifteen plus six, twenty-one. Twenty-one. Now, if you have any other further element, let's say twenty-one become x and the seven. Next will become 
28. What is the what is the sum of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7? What is the sum of that? 28. Is that clear? Is that clear? If I pass an initial value is 1, the result will change. If I pass initial value is 2, the result will change. If I pass initial value is 3, the result will change. The based on the initial value will be. So normally the initial value will start with a 0 for the most of the operations. But not for the all the multiplications kind of thing. If you go with the multiplication kind of thing, the total result will come 0. Okay. Is that clear to everyone what I'm trying to explain here? Anil, because Kranti, Deepika. Any doubt? Here it is like you know iterating. This is called iterating. Right? Is everyone is clear? Yes, no. Uh, could you please a little bit loud? Why it is fold left? Fold left. So we will see those uh, those functionalities. The fold left is like you are moving. Uh, I say I am taking the left element. I am doing. Uh, if you see here, what is happening? Everything result. If you see here, uh, what is happening? This is going to left, right. The result of each iteration is going to left. The result of each and everything will going left. We, we will talk about that, you know, very detailed, you know, not to worry at this point of time. I'm just showing you iteration. Why it is a fold left? Why can't it be fold right? Why can't it just a fold? We will see those things, so not to worry about it. The concept is clear. Is there? Now let's see the this is these are all called iterating. These are all iterating. Let's look at let's look at recursion. Recursions. Any doubt? I'm hearing from only one. I am not really not hearing from others. So this is quite little important, guys. Okay. So you may expect an inter equation or not, but it is a conceptual, it is more important. Conceptually more important. That's my question. That's that's uh, I want to tell you. The conceptually is little important. Any doubt, guys? No. Good. So now let's talk about what is a recursion. Recursion. Here, recursion, uh, let's say, let me explain you a uh, very simple definition here. The recursion is a function, a function, a function calling himself is a recursion. A function calling himself is a recursion. So we might have seen so many examples. The the uh, Fibonacci series, right? The Fibonacci series, one of the most important. And we will be seeing some of the, uh, I can say, merge sort. Most of the cases, most of the cases, right? We will use the recursions. Like a factorial, another famous example. The frequently asked question, I can say. Frequently asked the program right factorial these are all will do using a recursion right string reverse you can reverse the string by using the recursion by using the recursion so what we are writing in the recursion a function i will write a function which will read which will call himself which will call himself will call as a will call as a recursion anyway any guys heard about the recursion before Anyone heard about the recursion before? Yeah. Uh, I'm not hearing from others apart from Bikas. Uh, Praveen, Shankar, Nagesh, Marshad. Are you guys able to follow? No, 
Are you guys able to follow? Okay. So recursion is a function calling himself is called a recursion. Let me show you here. Let me show you a simple example, a recursion. Let me call, let me write a simple program here for the recursion. Irrespect, uh, what are the language it is, we are using either Java, Scala, or whatever any other language, or whether we are writing an imperative style or a functional style. Okay. So let me show you here a simple example for the recursion. I'm defining a function factorial which will take an element. What is a factorial? First try to understand what is a factorial mathematically? N factorial. When you say n factorial n n into n minus one. When n into n minus i. Alright? N into n minus i. So like how it is works, let's say when I say 4 factorial, it's a, it works such a way that 4 into n minus 1, 3 into n minus 1, 2 into n minus 1, 1, not 0, 0 factorial will say 1, okay, 0 factorial will say 1. So, it will, what it is doing here, 4 into 3, 12, 12 into 2, 24. When I say 5 factorial, 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. We might have done these things in our 7th class, 8th class or 10th class, right? So, 5 4s are 20, 23s are 60, 23s are 60, 62s are 120, right? Right? These are all factorial, right? So, the same thing if you put into the in the functional program, I mean in the in the programming language, if I ask you to do the same thing you write into the program, how we will write? We will write a method which will take an element like 5, 4, like that. So then I can call it as a number, n, and which will be uh, written type is int, which is written type is int, and the final result also will written int equal, equal. Then what I have to write a condition here. Okay, let me uh, 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 let me explain it without a condition in a negative scenario. What will happen? So here, what I will do, n into factorial of n minus 1. n minus 1. Factorial of n minus 1. Let me write the same thing in the program. Let me write the same thing in the program. Def factor factorial of def factorial of n, which will take integer as an argument or a parameter, which will return an integer as an output. So what I'm going to do n into as for the formula fact of because it has to call himself n minus 1 what's this I have defined I have defined a factorial if I say fact of 4 will it work will it work guys what happened we have to give a exit condition. So what happened here? What is happening? Because you did not any condition. Why it is no condition? Can anyone explain why it is giving this error to me? Let's keep going on. Why? Why? Can anyone tell me why this error is come, came for me? I have written a very simple, right? 4 only. I am not even taking bigger number. I just take a 4. Why this error came for me? I not even taken a very bigger number. I just taken 4. It is starting. Te uh, it started telling that stack overflow. 
count my stack hold four numbers count my stack hold four numbers is a is a the small size of my stack try to understand what is happening here try to understand what is happening here okay internally what is happening when i write a code like this when i write a code like this what will happen so we should know before uh, all these things we should know how the methods will call uh, how uh, no uh, the objects will be created we already discussed these things in uh, our java training and we do have two type of memories one is the heap memory and other one is the stack memory if everyone is if you guys remember there is some something called stack memory there is something called heap memory in the heap memory we will be having all objects from the stack memory we will be calling a functions so when i call a function there will be something called a stack there will be a stack there is some some part of the memory for the stack the very first one main method will be called and your factorial method will call in the factorial method is waiting actually it is what it is doing it is taking the n okay it is taking n which is 4 and calling another method fact of 3 it means it is waiting for the result of the it is waiting for the result of the that method and now 4 4 into the fact of 3 here 3 will come it is 3 and is waiting for the again fact Two. the next iteration or a next method call four three two and is waiting for the fact and four three two one still it is keep going on right there is a possibility negative number four minus one three three minus one two two minus one 1 1 minus 1 0 0 minus 1 negative number minus 1 minus 2 and so on the flow the call will keep increase so after certain limit after certain limit it will overflow after certain limit even stack also some some memory right after certain limit it will start overflow it will start overflow this is called stack overflow exception whenever i call a method the method will get called from the stack the method will call from the stack this is called stack memory and these are called stack frames what we'll call them each each portion right it looks like a you know rack right each portion will call stack frame what is happening here it is holding the current value it is holding the current value it is holding the current value and is waiting for the result of this function it means your function is not completed so main method also right when the main method will be completed start with the main method right then we'll call a factorial method the factorial method is waiting to complete the factorial of 3 is actually factorial of 4 and factorial 3 is waiting for the factorial of 2 the factorial of 2 is waiting for the factorial of 1 factorial of 1 is waiting for the factorial of 0 the factorial of 0 is wait, waiting for the minus 1 and so on keep going on one once it is reached a certain limit it will start overflow it will start overflow that is the reason we are getting the stack overflow exception that is the reason we are getting a stack overflow exception is it clear to everyone what is the stack and what is the stack frame is that clear to everyone so to avoid this problem to avoid this problem what we will do we will be having something some condition some base condition some certain limit the call has to be dropped at the certain limit the call has to be dropped this the same function we will write in a different way look at guys here 
I'll be writing here def fat and int it will be written in int I'll write some base condition this will call as a base condition it must and should on all the recursions any recursion if you take if you didn't properly handle your base condition you will end up with the you will end up with the getting a stack overflow exception you will end up with the stack overflow exception so the base condition should be important if n equal to 1 if n equal to 1 or n equal to 0 you just return 1 you just return 1 else else you do your operation n into fact of n minus 1 right anyway here I know need to write any written statement as we know that Scala is in phase or Scala can easily understand what is my written value here the written value is 1 here the written value is a whole result I really no need to write return statement here I really no need to write return statement here right are you guys able to follow what I'm trying to explain here now look at guys here the same function I'll be writing into this and let's see what will happen so let me bring it up yep def fact of oh no I can make use of the existing code right fact of okay let me show you uh, another difference here guys I'm removing the written type I'm removing the written type and you guys need to tell me whether it will execute or not if n equal to 1 you just written 1 else you do n into fact of n minus 1 n minus 1 n minus 1 done will it execute or not will it execute or not no recursive method fact method need the result return type it need a return type even though it is inferring the return type but you need specifically because since it is a recursively it's a expecting a return type of your fact what is the return type of fact you have to write that okay try to understand these two conditions guys in the Scala one is a base condition a base condition is not specific to Scala the base condition is everywhere even in any language if you take the base condition is most important so here you need to understand the return type okay so we should declare the return type we should specify the return type so I just want to bring that to notice so then rest of all are same you can have a if base condition you can have a else condition you can have this and you can have this now we pass our fact 3 or fact 4 whatever it is 24 fact 5 fact 5 120 fact 6 720 is that clear guys is it clear but do you really see is it a optimized code or I can say is it a, will it work with all the conditions will this work with all the conditions So I have written a code here. It is started working fine. So I'm asking you guys now. The code is good. It's working fine. I'm able to. I'm showing you results as well. Will this code work in all the scenarios? That's my question. Will this code work with all the scenarios? No, no, no. No, okay. One no. So what about others? Nagesh, Panidhar, Praveen, Shankar, Marshad, others. 
Just keep 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 asking your questions, even though it is a, whether you know it or not. Right? Keep answer me. Okay? So I'll understand. Okay? What you uh, uh, know? I want it to be a very interactive. That's the only reason. Why? So because he's telling no. Why? They will pass zero, right? It will again enter into the else part and start doing for that negative thing. So we never calculate. Uh, okay, fine. Let's look at that. So it is acting it. So I just need to play with my condition. It's really not problem with my uh, uh, logic. Just to play with your if condition. If n equal to zero, or I can say. n less than or equal to 0 you return 1 sorry sorry I need to break this Now because now it will work. Now it will work with uh, in all the scenarios. Will it work with all the conditions? What will happen if I give factor of ten working? Factor of hundred zero. Why? Why? Factor of 100 is 0. Is that clear? I mean, is, is that correct? Factorial of 100 is 0. Why it is giving me 0 as an answer? Since the range is beyond, the range is beyond your integer value. The method which I have declared the, the range is int. The return value is int. The return value is int. That's the reason. Okay, fine. There is a special in, a data type in Kala begin. Let's assume that I have taken the begin here and this else part. This now tell me, guys, factor of hundred will work now. Fine, it's very good. It's working. Factor of one thousand. It's working. Since it's a very bigger value. Factor of two thousand. Why? Good. Factor of five thousand. Okay. Fifty thousand. Gone. It's failed. I'm not able to find, I mean, I'm not able to find the factorial of 50,000. What is the problem you guys find here? Stack overflow. Stack overflow. Why this is happening? Why this is happening? This is happening because, this is happening because, just now we have discussed here. This is happening because, let me, let me explain this. I think someone wants to talk. Tanker? Oh, yes, yeah, see, range of uh, data type, I think. So, if you go to unit type, I... No, not the range of a data type. The range of data, is, if it is a range of the data type, it could have given zero. If it goes beyond the data type range, it could have given zero. It, could, it will not give you stack overflow exception. Okay? We have okay. taken integer. When it is the result is gone beyond the integer, it is given the result as zero. Okay, I'll tell you that. Okay, look at here, guys. Okay. Why it is happening? Just now we discussed stack and stack all and all those things, right?
okay now what is happening here let's go with the fact only directly so i'm not going with the main and all fact of 50000 fact of 50000 i mean minus 1 like uh, 49999 minus 1 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 and so on my stack cannot hold those many frames my stack cannot hold those many frames those many calls fact fact of n minus 1 fact of n minus 1 fact of n minus 1 and so on i cannot hold it is keep going on your stack cannot hold that much bigger number is going beyond your stack is going beyond your stack memory right you may say that sir i'll go and increase my stack memory in the the properties file sir that uh, ini file whatever it is i'll change my stack size even the certain limits is so now 50000 is fail later i'll say 5 lakhs again it will fail later i'll say 10 lakhs again it will fail so here is increasing the increase in the stack memory is not the solution increasing the stack memory is uh, is not the solution here we need to do something else we should not make use of all the stack memory for a single function we need to cut down our usage of the stack memory how we will cut down that that's where that's where there is something called tail recursion tail recursion tail recursion the most important thing guys so people may ask in interview what is the tail recursion how it will work tail recursion so tail recursion says that what you are doing here in the normal recursion you are holding current frame and is waiting for the result of the previous i mean uh, next frame next uh, stack frame here some value is there it's waiting for the next here some value is there it's waiting for the, the waiting for the result of the other factorial it's a keep going on like this yes or no so it is waiting it means the frames are increased the frames are not fitting in I mean more calls are not fitting into the stack that's the reason it's coming out of the stack stack overflow exception how can i avoid this i should not create these many these many frames it is happening such a way that he is holding some result and waiting he is waiting for in the same stack he is sitting in the same stack and waiting for the the uh, other call right so what tail recursion says that you hold it anyway you need a result you hold it okay you hold it but you don't be in a stack you hold the results but don't be in a stack you come out from the stack you come out from the stack how can i do that how can i do that so i'll i'll just give you a simple uh, pseudo code here so let's say i I'll, i'll write a method def fact you take n okay you take n and you return int it's a pseudo code so okay i'm going to again anyway i'll be showing the uh, exact code here so what i will do here and i'll take all this if condition else condition all all those things if n less than equal to 0 return 1 else uh, you do don't do n into don't do n into you just to write another method fact 2 here here you pass your n comma 1 you pass n comma 1 now define another function here def fact 2 who will take two arguments who will take two arguments you can say auxiliary will take do something here actually you really no need to check this condition you can check that condition here you can directly return this you can directly return this you really no need to check this here okay that's what i'm trying to say so you can write this you can check if n equal to blah 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 and all those things here if you see this solution is your fact is calling this function and 
does it waiting for this function result does it waiting for this function result is really not waiting for this function so here what you will do you will not write again a n into guys here okay so don't think that you will write n into here you will write factorial 2 factorial 2 n minus 1 and n into n into the what are the arcs you have taken a o x this is you are not holding you are not holding any prefix if you look at this you are calling this right what is happening here it is not actually holding it's not actually holding the value and it's not waiting for other right so first it will call with this tag the fact first it will call with the fact with the four and it will call fact two by passing four minus two one three and four, 4 minus 1 3 and your 4 into 1 this is called I'm calling no 4 into 1 4 the function is get called again this function will call himself but he's not holding he's not actually holding he's not waiting for him the result is not waiting for him right so now what will happen now what will happen here now 3 comma 4 it returns 3 comma 4 now this guy again factor 2 will get call with 3 minus 1 2 4 into 4 into what do you have passed here auxiliary value right here you are passing let me call this 4 comma 4 comma uh, initially 4 minus 1 3 right 3 into 4 into 1 3 comma 4 I call so my n minus 1 is become 3 2 and this is 4 so the 4 will come into inside the loop and and this 4 is not 0 and it will become a 2 2 uh, the result is 2 this is 4 okay uh, 3 into 4 12 and I'm calling with a 3 into 4 12 it means 2 comma 12 next fact call 1 1 2 into 12 24 1 comma 24 1 comma 24 so I'm returning here 1 comma 24 so my result is 24 my result is 24 right same thing let me show you with this simple uh, alternative way the simple pseudo code okay let me show in the Scala code how we will write the same thing I, I know that you guys have some uh, doubt here so since it is keep calling a uh, fact two only no so you are telling that how how, how it is uh, it's not getting called himself so let me show you uh, with this exact code instead of showing with this let me increase my screen little more because i really need it okay So here, what we need to do, this, the, the solution will, which will provide in uh, Scala is, look at here guys, I'm going to write a function, I'm going to write a function which is a factorial, I'll say factorial of n which is written int so I will take here something called input 
like ox okay which is also int okay so then it will return int then it will return int i'll tell you why i'm taking int okay i'll tell you that okay just look at here then i get my condition if n is less than or equal to 0 return 1 else n into sorry no n into here no n into here we should not say n into since we are going with the since we are going with the tail recursion we should not say n into here so here we will write directly we will write directly factorial of n minus 1 and your n into input factorial of factorial of n minus 1 comma n minus 1 comma n into input right so i'll show you this let's write this code okay i'll, I'll explain after executing this you'll understand easily okay look at here let me write it in this console def factorial of n which is i'll pass the value and i'll take something called input or auxiliary i'll say int that also int and which will return an int which will return an int here here i will write in my if condition so let me use that uh, the file we have written already if and let me make use of the else and here let me make use of this i should not call n into i should call n minus 1 comma but it should not be fact it should be factorial n minus 1 comma n minus 1 comma n into n into your input n into your input okay let's look at here i have written let's go and check this okay this is quite a bigger value okay it's actually quite a bigger value i will check with uh, 100 actually failed right sometime before okay it is given the result here it's given the result so what is actually happening here what it is actually happening here it is not it is, oh sorry sorry guys wait one second i should say factorial right not fact that's what factorial of 100 factorial of 100 no two parameters i have to pass still it's giving me one why because the it's gone beyond int so uh, above it's a, since it has written type is bigger into into written into type I, I think if i write it in a notepad is better so let's take here begin okay I could write it in notepad to copy paste easily to modify and okay why it's giving still one I pause hundred What happened guys? I'll quickly finish this. Okay, I don't want 
uh, extend this class for the next session. n less than or equal to 0 is written 1 okay and factorial n minus 1 n minus 1 okay okay it's coming here n minus 1 it's coming this let's say for timing forget about the 0 condition yeah when you will read this n equal to 1 right hmm. there it will it will return 1 only so where you are keeping the holding that visual ratio you are not holding any it will always be one only. Okay. Logic you have to change. No, the logic is I should not return one here, right? I should return whatever the value comes. This value I need to return. Correct. I need so to when if you if you will reach n minus one, now it will work. That, right this is all the all final result right it will work what changes have you this one written type here it should not be written zero yes it should not return yes zero. so you can handle yes. your zero condition also here all right. you can handle zero condition also here okay mm -hmm. so you can say it's less than zero you return input okay so this is easy to you know compare to above every time i need to now look at quickly why zero because since it is a going beyond uh, uh, going beyond your uh, integer range you may say that you already taken begin no why still here i need to take because since, since i am returning i am returning int here i am returning int here okay now now while calling it i need to lay, change little you uh, know small thing saying that begin to off if I pass only one it will take integer now look at here I got the value I got the value and let's go with uh, let's go with uh, it, it was failed 50,000 right got it I mean it's here it is showing dot 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 why because we are using the repel right we are using the repel that's the reason so now factorial of 50,000 it is taking let me try with the 5 lakhs factorial of 5 lakhs since it's a very big value right it has to calculate so many things right so it is taking quite a sim uh, some time okay not to worry about it it's taking quite a long time okay but it's not failing right it's not failing like a stack overflow it's actually calculating 5 lakhs is a very big number 5 lakhs into 4 lakhs 999 into 4 lakhs 99998 into so that has to be calculated right that's the reason it's taking quite a long time now as uh, than normal okay this this type of recursions we will call okay let me finish by the time it will work anyway it will work okay so i don't want to wait for the result anyway it will work such a kind of such kind of recursions we will call such kind of recursions we'll call we will call what we'll call tail recursions tail recursions and we'll be having our friend okay we'll be having one second guys do you why run choose not one second guys okay now here look at what i'm trying to say tomorrow someone changed the code saying that hey it looks what i never seen such kind of code someone replaced this line hey how is written this guy uh, code like this and how it will working i really don't know and someone is come and he changed into one into factorial of factorial of n minus one comma n into input he did it now it, it will not become again a it, it it cannot be a it cannot be a tile recursion here it cannot be a tile recursion why again is holding the some result and is waiting for the factorial function someone may while doing the code review right will be having our old people someone is reviewing the code and they will be why he's written like that let's no no change it change into one into factorial so there won't be any problem then when you change that one into 
it become a see here five lakhs you got the bigger value five lakhs you got it so if i change the code if i change my code like one into here one into here look at guys will it be fail for five lakhs or five thousand or uh, fifty thousand or not good let me call for fifty thousand to fifty thousand is giving a fail it is failing before it was not failing for the fifty thousand now it started failing why because the stack overflow why because stack overflow to avoid such kind of mistakes to avoid such kind of mistakes scala comes with something called annotation scala dot so you can specify that annotation saying that scala dot annotation annotation dot tail rec tail rec you will specify annotation tail rec look at guys here i need to check the repl is is something is giving wrong let me uh, i think uh, i cannot specify the here dot spelling maybe annotation spelling is the wrong vira why you come up with this annotation why you require i just know you shown you right someone can come and uh, uh, change change one second guys okay okay One second, guys. One into. If someone change like one into, it will start giving you a problem, right? To avoid that problem. To avoid that problem. So annotation, you specify like that. Then you go uh, define your the rest of the thing. Factorial of n into int, comma, input. I can make use. Uh, I think I can do this. Now you go with fifty thousand. It will work, right? And now try with the wrong value. Okay, the same. You try the same with the wrong value. I will like uh, someone. Let's assume that someone is changed. Changed to one into. This these lines will not be recognized there. That's the reason I'm removing them. Now you try with one into here. You try it one into. It will give. It will not give a stack overflow exception. It will give. It is not a tail recursion. You are telling. You are how specified is a tail recursion, and you are trying to do one into factorial. It is actually not a tail recursion. It is actually not a tail recursion. Don't use this one star. Remove the one star. Could not optimize at the rate tail rec annotation method factorial. It contains the recursive call, not the tail recursive call. It is actually you are doing a recursive call, not a tail position. Look at that. Right? If someone did like this also, still it it will show you the proper message saying that you have specified as a uh, annotation which is a tail recursion, but uh, but you are trying to do a normal recursive call, which is not allowed here. Is that clear? Still, we can optimize the code. So you may say that uh, Nora, Vira, every in the, in the world classes in the C C plus plus when I want to call my uh, factorial, I used to pass only one value. Now you you made my life very you know. Uh, Uh, difficult by passing two values. By passing two values, that also we can optimize. Since we are pro, uh, since we are, uh, I can say Java developers or whatever the Scala developers, you can go ahead and change the code. You can change your code. But the logic is this: you can change your code by pass one parameter, make internally another call, make internally another function, nested functions. If you guys remember, nested function. You call internally one more function, you just solve that problem. that can be done easily so look look at how it looks okay look at how it looks factorial of you pass only one value 
you pass only one value okay and you return you return whatever the return value comes below you really no need to specify the return value here nature function right since that is it depends on the nature function so now you do internally this uh, instead of here this function name and this function name should not be same you say it's a fact you say it's a fact you say it is a factorial you say it's a factorial okay now you re you should remove this okay you should not use this now after completing this here what do you say we'll just call this function you just need to call this function here you need to pass value n and you need to pass here begin of one this is this is how we'll call this is how we'll call begin of one this is how we'll call our nested functions look at here now okay now you pass 50000 to your factorial now you pass your 50000 to your factorial it will work it will work right this is the power of functional programming style and this is this is how we will do these things this is how we will do the things is that clear to everyone about the factorial recursive factorial this is the more important guys this is this is called a tail recursion people may ask you in interview what is the tail recursion how will achieve that so uh, this is how the we, we will do that tail recursion very simple you're removing your tail okay you are calling you are you are not holding the value and you are not waiting for the other functions result you are taking you are just hold the value you don't be don't be in the stack you just come out from the stack don't be in the stack you pop up you pop out okay here i'm telling that you have a stack always you will make use of the only two frames okay one function call you you call some value you come out you hold the value phi lakhs into and call other function that's it you popped out you popped out now what will happen you called for for 49999 and the result will come you pop you popped out and this will wait for another things so you 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 will always make use of the only two frames instead of so many frames instead of so many frames it's a clearly what it is telling you hold the value but you don't need to wait in the stack you come out you don't need to wait in the stack you come out and make a call of other function that will get that give will that guy will take a result of this and he will come out from the stack and he will call another function he will remove this and he will call is it clear guys this is how we will save the memory this is how our tail recursion works okay so that's it guys for today if you guys have any doubt please ask me or we can have uh, 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 either you can ask me the questions now or you can you, you can ping me in the chat uh, we have a whatsapp group there you can ping me or we can talk in the class is it clear to everyone anil because this is the most important yeah, right? people may ask you what yeah. is the tail recursion people may ask you to write a code for the tail recursion very very simple it is you just need to this is your first program of writing a, a first method of writing a factorial this is the first method of writing our factorial by passing a, a holding what happens by ho holding this this is the first way of writing where is my cursor it's not moving where is the cursor yeah here it is so this is the first way of writing your here you are holding this and the second way of writing you remove this okay you just remove this part and you make a proper call that's it you make a proper call that's it it will start working this like, like this like this okay okay and may start making use of the uh, tail recursion uh, annotation to uh, save god ourselves from the this kind of errors okay so that's it guys for today if you guys have any doubts please ask me else we can leave for the day so we are no class tomorrow right?
Uh, yeah, so that's what you know, people are uh, keep insisting Saturday, Sunday, they don't want to have a class. If anyone uh, really interested, we can have one class on Saturday. Sunday. We can do one class. We, we can, can do one class. So, yeah, you, that's what as I told in the last session as well. You guys uh, ask, tell uh, tell me the timings. I'm very, uh, very much okay with that. Uh, six to eight, I'm very much okay with that. Two hours we can spend and we can you know complete some portion of it. Scholar. Yeah. Yeah. So next class we will be getting into the classes. And before getting into the classes, I just want to give a string interpolation. Very simple concept it is. And uh, once the string interpolation is done, we will be getting into class and all those things. Class and object. Uh, what is the class, what is object, what is the uh, abstraction, those things, traits and all we will be looking into. Once we are done with them, then we will go into collections. Once the collections are done, transformations. Once the transformations are done, we will be getting into the spark. Okay. So actually, we need to finish this part early because it is taking too much of time. So we will finish it early, we will move it to spark as much as possible. Yeah, so why, why I'm spending time here, right? So the similar way why we spend some time in the Java. So if you understand this, uh, it will help It will help you to uh, move faster in the Spark part. So that's the reason I'm spending here. So if I didn't spend the time here, then I need to spend the day, uh, time in the Spark coding by explaining the each and everything. That's the only reason. Yeah, anyway, we will move with that. I, I, I totally agree with you. Yeah. So we will uh, we'll have class tomorrow, right? Uh, you guys have a discussion and let me know. Uh, please let me know whether we'll have a class tomorrow or not. So based on that, we'll take a call. Anyway, we have a WhatsApp group. Just discuss. 